Okay, so you can see here, this is what we're gonna end up making here. It's a really nice purple isometric room with this kind of cool neon blue light kind of spilling through these blinds, casting these nice sharp shadows. And we're gonna learn how to do this under 20 minutes. So here we go, tuts under 20. Real quick before we get started, don't forget that toolfarm.com, I have a coupon code in the description below my video that will get you an extra 5% off. Also, this project file that we're going to create today is going to be available to download on Gumroad. In the past, I've given away projects for free, but honestly, I'm having a baby. She's due New Year's Eve, and babies ain't cheap. So I'm going to ask for $2, but to make up for that, you're also not just going to get the scene that we make today, but you're also going to get an animated version as well. All right, so let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is create a new scene, and then we're going to create a cube. And we're going to go ahead and go under the object tab here. We're going to change this to 400. And then 400 and 400. 400, 400. There we go. And we're going to go to our coordinates tab. And we're going to lift it up 200 centimeters in the Y. And that's just going to put it right here on the floor because our axis is right in the middle. So now I've got our cube lifted up to the right spot. One last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add 20 segments to this across all axes. So now if we go here and display in our shaded lines, you'll see these here. So what we can do is hit C to make this editable. Go ahead and do that. We're going to select our planes here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our top view. We're going to go ahead and select rectangle selection. Make sure that only visible elements is selected. That way we're not selecting everything. We're just going to go ahead and select the top. Hit delete. Go ahead to the right side here. Do the same thing. Hit delete. And now the front side, same thing and delete. And there you go. You're nice left with this nice little room here. And what we can do is go to select. Go to our ring select tool, select this whole bottom row here, right click and hit extrude. And we're just gonna click and drag that out a little bit. We're gonna slide in so we can see that. And then one more time, we're gonna do that again and pull it down just a bit to give it a little bit of a curve. So that's just giving us a nice little um, trim work there. So now that we've got that selected still, we're gonna hit UY, UY, and that's gonna go ahead and grab uh, the rest of that bevel for us. We're going to hit hold control and choose our select tool here and just make sure we're not getting these little edge pieces that for some reason got grabbed on there. So now we've got our whole trim selected. We're going to go ahead and create our material, redshift material, material, double click that to bring up the shader graph. We're going to go ahead and just change this white to about 90% white. We're going to go to the reflection weight and change it into 0.2 and then the roughness of 0.4. And that's going to give it kind of this rough look and we're going to change our IOR to 1.8. Okay, we're gonna throw that on there. We're gonna hold control and click and drag to make a duplicate copy of this. And we're gonna go ahead and make that pink color we like. So let's go ahead and this purpley pink, make it real faded if you wanna see what that is. Um, whoops, 10 and 90% and 282. Okay, so let's get our nice little purpley pink. We're gonna hit UI and that's gonna select the inverse and go ahead and slow that on there. So now we've got our pink room to work with. Okay, so now that we've got our pink room, let's go ahead and make our window. The easiest way we're gonna do this is to middle mouse click so we can see our side view here, grab our rectangle view, and just go ahead and select our window here. Boop, perfect. Now we're gonna hold control, well, let's make it a little bit bigger. And like so, okay. So now we're gonna hold control and bring it back just a little bit, and then back again, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna go to create, register material, material, Double click that one, choose the glass preset, and we're done with that. Let's go ahead and grab that and drag that on there. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to add in our couch and our coffee table and our palm tree. So what we need to do for that real quick is go to our content browser. And if you own the Cinema 4D, you have the visual, um, you have the Studio 3D contents pack available to you. And inside of that is some amazing stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this uh, ponytail palm, slap it in here. Put that in the corner, raise it up a little bit. And then under our objects, we're gonna go ahead and texture this with our pink. And we're gonna go ahead and use a green as well. So we're gonna make a hold control and make a copy of that. We're gonna go in here and choose this and we're gonna click this little wheel here. And inside this wheel, there's an option to choose a complementary color for you where you can click this little square and it's gonna make it exactly the right color that's gonna complement that pink. So we're gonna throw that in and make that on the branch and some of the leaves and then the pink back for the other leaves. So now we're gonna have this nice mix of colors on these leaves here. So to make a pot for this plant real quick, we're gonna make a cylinder. We're gonna pull it over to the corner and we're gonna make sure we're in our model view so we can scale this easier. Pull it up, shrink it down a little bit, pull it down, we don't want it to be that big. 
We can switch over to our side view so we can see and center it up a little bit. There we go. Put the fillet on it, the fillet. And we're going to shrink this down about two centimeters with the two. There we go. Very nice. Now we're going to hit C to make the editable or hit the little button up there. Go ahead and select our faces. We're going to select everything on top of here. Hold control, pull it down and pull it down and pull it down. Okay. So now we've got a nice little pot for our plant. And we're going to go ahead and throw the pink. Um, actually, we're going to make our plant pot white. We're going to throw the white on the plant pot. That looks nice. Let's center that up a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Now for the couch. We're going to go ahead and go to the content browser and type in sofa. Voila, bring this sofa in, bam. Perfect, and again, this is all available in the 3D content pack. We're going to push T and slide this up. You can use whatever couch you want. Obviously, uh, the main thing you're going to do is make sure you have the material set up correctly. So we're going to slap this pink on there, hold control, click and drag it down, drag it down again. And we're going to go ahead and make sure our legs, we're going to use the uh, green for the legs. There we go. Okay, so now we take a quick look and see where we're getting. Voila, we're getting there. This looks pretty nice so far. Looks very Pixar-y. Okay, old school Pixar, not new Pixar, obviously. Now we're gonna get a coffee table real quick. We're gonna make a cube, slide that down. Hit E, bring it up a little bit, fatten that back up just a bit. We're gonna make that eight. And we're gonna go ahead and, sorry, we're gonna make this 30. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make this 100. And we're gonna slide it over just a little bit here. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna add the fillet. <laughs> I can't say that every time, I can't help myself. Uh, three and two, that looks good. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and make the cylinders for the legs, make these teeny tiny. Switch over this view so we can make sure we're not shoving it through the floor too far. And this way we can see should probably make our coffee table a little higher. It's a little low right now. We kind of want it right above the seat cushions. Uh, right right about at the seat cushion height, yep. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and make our leg a little longer. Make sure it's clipping through the table and not through the floor, perfect. And we'll position it in the right spot. We'll put it right here on this spot here. Hold control, drag it over. And then we're gonna select both of those and then hold control and drag those over here. So there we go. Now we've got all of these together. We're gonna right click. And we're going to group and we're going to call that sofa. I mean, coffee table. Okay. Now we've got the coffee table. That looks a little gigantic. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to push it down into the floor a little bit. I'm going to go in here. I'm all our cylinders and we're just going to shorten that up a little bit. Height, we're going to say like 40, right? And then pull that up a bit. Yeah, there we go. Maybe 35. Yep, yeah, there we go. 35. Okay. So now we need to make the blinds. Make the blinds real quick. We're going to make another cube. We're going to pull it down, make it really tiny, really thin, and squish it in real tight. Not that tight. Too tight. We're going to pull that in real thin and pull it down a bit. We're going to say about eight for the X and about two for the Y. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and grab a MoGraph cloner. Put the cube in the cloner. And then what we're going to do is make the Y difference of five. And we're going to go ahead and while we have our cloner selected, we're going to go ahead and put this up in the window here. There we go, right in front. And we can tell that our cube isn't wide enough. So we're going to go ahead and stretch our cube out till it fits. Just about fills this window. There we go. We'll shrink it back down just a bit. Mm -hmm. Center this on the window a little bit. There we go. And we'll just keep adding until we fill up the window. There we go. Perfect, so we ended up with 40. Okay, let's add our pink texture to our coffee table here and we'll do white legs for each of these cylinders. Let's go in here and drag this in. Control, control click and drag to fit that across each of those. Okay, so now for the lighting, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use a dome light, but we're actually gonna use an area light. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a plane. Bring it down a little bit so it's not clipping into our object there. We're just gonna hit T, we're just gonna scale. <clears throat> we're gonna hit T and scale that up pretty high. So we have this big floor here and we're gonna go ahead and just add this pink to that floor as well. Okay, so now we need to add our bookcase real quick. So we're gonna content browser, type in bookcase. You're gonna be able to grab this bookcase stand number one. And we're gonna go ahead and grab that up here, pull it up by this two axes here. Hit R to rotate it. We're gonna hold shift and rotate it 90 degrees this way. Pull that up in front of the wall so it's just barely coming through. Slide it over, we can go to our middle mouse here. 
so we can make sure we center that over the couch nicely and make sure it's not clipping through the wall. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna grab our white material, put it over top of that, and we go into our objects and we see, twirl this down. We have a decorative back. Well, let's put the pink on top of that. So now we have that nice pink back there. Actually, let's do the green. There we go, so that pops from the wall a little bit. Okay, so we've got our blinds here. We've got them set to two, uh, four, two, and 271. That's fine. So what we're gonna do now is add some lights to our scene. So what we're gonna need to do first is go to our lights, area light. Now you could use a dome light. Uh, dome lights definitely have their advantages and they're really neat and they're very easy for quick renders, but you don't have as much control over them because they're kind of preset lighting setups. So I like to use area lights whenever I can. So area light, and we're gonna go ahead and drag that straight up and we're gonna hit R, rotate that. 90 degrees, and we're just gonna make that really big. This is gonna be our huge studio box light, okay? So it's just straight down over top of our whole scene. We're gonna go in here and change the intensity down to five. And there we go, we're gonna leave that how it is. So the next thing we need to do is add this light that's gonna come through this window here. So what we need to do is create another area light. And we're gonna go ahead and bring that up through here, like so. Okay, so if you look at our multiple views here, you can see kind of where it is in relationship to that window. And the main thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna turn off this area light. We're gonna uncheck that so we can see this here. And with this area light, we want to take it down to five because it's at a thousand, which is insane, or a hundred. And we're gonna go ahead and take this spread and we're gonna take that down to zero. I'm gonna show you what that does. So if we go to our render view right now, this is what it looks like when it's set to one. Okay, and then when we set it down to zero, you'll see it really hones it in. And if we rotate this so that we can see where it's shedding, you can see how that it's casting these nice blinds like that. When we had it up to one, it wasn't doing that. It's a much softer, softer box light. So it's almost like adding diffusion, see? So you take that diffusion away and you can get those nice sharp lines, which is what we want. So we're gonna rotate this a little bit and we're gonna hit E and pull it out a little bit and up a little bit. And then we're gonna rotate it just a little bit more. Basically what we want, there we go. And we're gonna pull it over some more. Perfect, and we're gonna scale that up. So it fills that whole window. And move it over just a bit because you don't want it. Oh, and then pull it closer to the window. And then it's a little tinier. Perfect, okay. So we want it to fill this window. So we just want it to fill the whole window space just a bit, but we don't want it to, there we go, cast out beyond our cube here. So that looks really nice. We've got it on the couch, plant, the bookshelf, it's crossing the table there a little bit. Really nice. So what we're gonna do now is turn our other light back on. So now we can see we have this nice light coming through and there we go. Okay, so it's looking kind of better, but it still looks kind of poopy. So the next thing we need to do is change our view. We wanna go to view up here and go to camera go to this axonometric and go to isometric. And that's gonna boom, boom, set us up in this nice viewport here. Now, if yours isn't facing the correct way, all you need to do is hit control A and you can just rotate everything however you need to do it. Hold shift to rotate to 90 degrees and get that set up where you want it and then hit E to move everything wherever you need it to be centered on your scene. So there you go. Okay, so what we need to do now is set our lighting colors a little bit. So I like to have the Redshift Render View open and have the IPR going, okay? And first thing we need to do before we do this is just kind of get the basic render settings down. We're gonna hit GI and we're gonna scroll down to Brute Force and Brute Force, type six in here and type 512 in there. Okay, and that's just gonna give us a little global illumination in there. We're gonna go down here to the sampling overrides and we're gonna go to light. We're gonna check that and we're gonna say 512. And reflection, we're gonna say 64. There's not really much reflections going on, so we don't need a ton there. And then the air threshold, we're gonna go 0.003. And that's just gonna clean up a little noise for us. Okie dokie, so this is looking pretty good. So one thing we wanna do is with our big area light here, we wanna change that to like this deep purple color, okay? Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that's a little too bright. I want more, more of a deep purple. There we go. I like that. Let's go a little deeper, a little more blue. Yes. There we go. 
Okay, and then for this light, we want it to be a green, like C cyan. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. And one thing I forgot to do is actually, um, okay, no, never mind, we're good. And that's looking better already. So one thing we can do is go in here under this gear option here. And if you can't see this, you just need to slide it over until it's available. Or you can hit these little arrows and it'll drop it down. It's kind of like uh, tricky to grab. Um, so we go ahead and slide that over, get our gears here, turn on the checkbox for the color controls and up the contrast to, oh, let's see. Ooh, ooh, now we're getting somewhere. 0.28. And let's go ahead back to our air, purple area light and take that back to, to more of a lighter purple. There we go. Now we've got the kind of this nice, cool look going on here. So we can scroll this down. We can add a little S curve to this if you want. Just click and drag in here. There you go. And then we'll add a photographic exposure so we can kind of adjust the lighting here. We can change our f-stop. We can adjust the overall brightness of the scene here. And we're going to go to about mm, 10. Yep. And we're going to turn on bloom. This is really cool. I love bloom. Bring the threshold down and you can see phew, that's going to let our window just kind of have this nice little glow and you can adjust the softness of that. We're going to tighten that up and bring that down. There we go. You can adjust the intensity of that. I think the default of one is pretty good. There we go. So now we have this nice cool glow coming through here and we can go up here and we can adjust our exposure just a bit if we want. No, sorry. We can bring our contrast down just actually, I like the contrast being up 0.28 is pretty solid. I like the way this is, this is looking. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So we've got that going for us. Next thing we want to do is just go ahead and go to our output. Make sure we set a preset to square that's under the screen. Square 1K, I think that's really good for Instagram. And then under our render settings, you'll see we already set those up. So all we have to do is now is hit uh, here and you'll take a look. So we'll hit render on that and you'll see that there's gonna be some, some noise and stuff going on in here. Now that's not bad. We could up all our samples and everything and really, you know, fine tune this and that's just gonna up the render time. And honestly, I don't wanna spend that much render time rendering this because you can actually get it an easier way. So what we're going to do is actually close this, cancel that. And we're going to go to our render settings and we're going to go to our redshift option here. I'm going to scroll down till we find D noise and we're going to choose optics. And if you don't um, have, if you have newer than R20, I think they actually interviewed, uh, introduced a new uh, denoiser, which actually works really well. Um, but we're going to use the denoise built into redshift here and use the optics option here. So we're gonna to go to Redshift Render View. And I like to render in here because if I render inside of here, I still have the option to tweak and adjust things, but you'll see the difference here. And there we go. Now we can see here that that optics really cleaned up that noise really nicely for us. We can get away with using the optics very nice to speed that up and make that really clean. So I think we're a little off center. We should fix that. We'll recenter that just a bit. and render that again. You'll notice it doesn't apply the post effects until the end of the render. So don't worry if it's not looking right as it's rendering, it will look correct in the end. So there we go. That's a really cool, nice little scene. We're just gonna go ahead and save that as a JPEG. That's fine. And we're gonna call this ISO room four. Here we go. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe, like, and ring the bell. It really does help my channel out a lot. Uh, and be sure to write in the comments below um, if you have any questions. Also, if you have any suggestions for more of these short bite-sized tutorials where we can start from scratch, or maybe not start from, start from scratch, but just conquer something uh, within 20 minutes. And just kind of, I've got some ideas laid out and be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram at @effectatron and be on the lookout for new notifications of when the next one of these is coming out. We're gonna try to start pumping these out more regularly and more often because there's a lot of new users out there and I wanna get some content out there for people starting off because Cinema 4D and Redshift bundled together just has this huge opportunity for new people to make some amazing stuff really fast um, with a very small learning curve for Redshift. So basically really cool, check it out. Be sure to check out my Skillshare tutorials on Redshift and I have a new one coming out on motion tracking very soon. I'm really excited about it. So see you guys next time.